What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And I want to show y'all some nonsense in real time. So I was listening to the debate between the Democrats and Republican, um, I guess the House uh, managers and the Council for the President, and responding to some questions. And someone asked a very practical question about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Now, I think these are legitimate questions, considering this whole thing revolves around President Trump asking about someone looking to the Bidens. And apparently you're not allowed to do that. And the president had no reason or justification to ask. Now the Democrats have been arguing and saying, well, why do we need to hear from Joe? Why do we need to hear from, from Hunty? Because they can't contribute to whether the president tried to shake down someone in another country so that he could help them with his election. They have nothing to do with that. Well, well, that's not true because the president asked about Hunter and Joe for a reason. And they're trying to say his motive for doing that was simply to help him in his election and not because there was real reason to ask about it because what they were doing seemed corrupt. Now, here's a response from Pam Bondi. All right. The, the judge, the question that the judge asked was, why didn't Joe or did he ever ask counsel that, hey, is there conflict of interest with me? and my son and what should i do about it which of course we know joe didn't he didn't ask nobody but let's listen to how amazing this pivot is and misdirection from the democrat response after we listen to pam bondi okay here we go you heard our answer i'm sorry chief justice she was senators she was um senators you heard our answer regarding that yesterday but it is very interesting that he said he never spoke to his son about overseas dealings his son said different things joe biden was the point man for ukraine investigating at the time ukrainians were a corrupt company burisma what? and zolchevsky its owner an oligarch who by all media accounts we've discussed was extremely corrupt. Hunter Biden has paid $83,000 a month, a month, to sit on that board with no experience in energy, no experience in the Ukraine, doesn't speak the language, and we clearly know that he had a very fancy job description, and he did none of those things. He attended one or two board meetings, one in Monaco, and then he went on a fishing trip with Joe Biden's family in Norway. The entire time Joe Biden knows that, Joe Biden knows that this oligarch is corrupt. Everyone knows that. There are news reports everywhere. No one will dispute that. In fact, it raised eyebrows worldwide. But the vice president, by his account, never once asked his son to leave the board. We wouldn't be sitting here if he did. He never asked his son to leave the board. Instead, he started investigating the prosecutor who was going after Burisma and this corrupt no, oligarch no. who they say was corrupt even by oligarch standards, <laughs> who had fled the country, fled the country, living in Monaco, he does not ask him to leave the board. He does the opposite. In 2015, what does he do? What? We know by reports he has close contact with President Poroshenko. He travels to Ukraine twice. He links it to the fire. He links the aid to the firing. Same thing in 2016 at a what? White House meeting. Links the aid to the firing of the prosecutor. Calls him four times in the eight days up to leading to the prosecutor. The, um, the prosecutor investigating Hunter Biden, yet he never says that, all cases close. Days before Biden leaves office, he jokes to Poroshenko that he may have to call him every couple weeks to check in. Hunter Biden stays on that board for three years, three years. Then we hear the video of Joe Biden bragging about firing the prosecutor, linking it to aid. Then we have the six minute phone call. That is crazy, y'all. Now, remember, there's no reason to look into Joe Biden. No reason. There's nothing to see here. No reason why the president should have inquired. Hey, why don't you look into the Bidens? After this wonderful and beautifully laid out argument, the Democrats are going to come with this lame excuse and pivot. Now, y'all ready? I don't even think y'all ready for this. Okay. They got this sister coming up and she's going to try to make sense out of that nonsense to our senators. Senators, thank you so much for that question. I know you have asked about a 
conversation between a uh, father and his son. And what I can tell you probably like just about every That's not the question. The question is, did Joe Biden go to and seek counsel about his son on that board? Because remember, Joe's trying to, you know, stamp out corruption over in Ukraine. But yet, as his son sits on the most corrupt company in Ukraine. See, that, that to me sounds like this conflict of interest. That's like saying I am the, the, the top FBI deputy dog, but my son is the godfather of the mob in New York. And I'm going, I didn't know anything about it. I, there's my son was, uh, we don't talk about these things. We get together for Christmas. So how's the crime business doing, son? Oh, it's doing great, dad. How's the FBI stuff going? Oh, it's going great. Now, we, it doesn't overlap. It doesn't overlap. There's no conflict of interest there. No reason for me to ask about my son's dealings. Okay, let's continue. Everybody in this chamber, um, there are probably some conversations that I can't repeat mm -hmm. to you about my conversations with my son. Okay. So I don't know the answer to your question. Of course you don't. Uh, Senator, what that exact conversation was. But okay, here's the what I can tell you is this. Pivot. If we are serious about why we are here, and I have no reason to doubt that we are. If we are serious about seeking the truth, because the truth matters, not just for those who have paid the price in our history, to form the okay now here it comes y'all ready for the emotional buildup okay because the truth matters now we're tapping into the emotions not because of those that paid the price in our history see what does that have to do with the facts of the matter see pam bondy got straight to the point here's what happened here's the facts and this and that now she's talking about the ancestors paying the price in our history and all this stuff right now what she's doing she's dragging it out this is called fluff this is called fattening it up this is called invoking your emotions this is called misdirection and pivoting from the real question let's continue more perfect union and protect our democracy but it's important for our future and in this case if we're serious about that then i can tell you this that we are serious then about hearing from fact witnesses, fact witnesses. looking at the bidens no matter how many times we call their name we have no evidence to point to the fact that either Biden has anything at all to tell us about the president shaking down a foreign power to help him cheat. Now, that was a very loaded response. First of all, we have no evidence about the Bidens. OK, now, remember, she's not talking about we have no evidence about the Biden shasty, shasty and shady dealings over in Ukraine. See, she don't want to touch that topic. She's saying we have no evidence with the Bidens knowing something about what the president did, but you gotta understand what she's trying to do is make you not associate the president's question about the Bidens with the Bidens' actual behavior, okay? She's trying to say that that has nothing to do with why the president would ask that question, even though Pan Bondi just laid out a litany of reasons to ask that question. So she just went ahead and said, let me pivot and sweep all that crap under the under the rug. I'm going to keep the, the, the viewer's attention on what the president did and not what the Bidens did to make the president do what he did. Pretty clever trick, isn't it? It's a mind trick. See, it's a Jedi mind trick. And so here we go. Oh, not to mention, she goes even further and just says the president did this to cheat in the upcoming election, even though the president never even mentioned the upcoming election and none of that was in the conversation. Uh, he never even talked about the 2020, none of that, none of that, to nobody. But nonetheless, she just knows why the president asked. Not a real practical reason that Pam Bondi just presented. It's some mystical reason, which is to cheat. Even though the evidence stacks up more so, that he would have asked that question because of all that she just laid out, Pam Bondi. But instead, we're going to dismiss the real evidence and just drop in some crazy theoretical reason why the president did that, which is to cheat in 2020. Yeah, that's more logical than all the other evidence. Let's continue. The next election, the precious election trying to steal Yo. each individual in this country's vote. 
as they are trying to do that right now as we speak by impeaching the president. Unbelievable. They try to do it with Russia collusion. That didn't work. They're trying to do it with giving out licenses to all types of people who shouldn't even be here in the country. They're trying to do it with let's change electoral college. Let's do all of this stuff to mess up stuff and hope, hopefully can help the president uh, lose. They're trying to do it with all of that. But yeah, she's talking about Trump because he asked about Joe Biden and Hunter, you know, with reasons to do that, obviously is trying to cheat and take away the votes of all of these people, which I'm still kind of wondering how he is doing that. I mean, you mean to tell me just by asking that question? First of all, we would have never known that he asked that question if it wasn't for the, the corrupt whistleblower that tried to come out and stick it to the president. Notice that the Ukrainian president never did any of those things anyway. So then by bringing this to light, trying to impeach him, they're the ones that put Joe Biden's business out there. OK, they're the ones that did that. So let's continue. As she wraps this garbage up. Oops. Has any information about that, but let me tell you who I think does. Oh, pivot. Here Maybe is. we should call Ambassador Bolton. Oh. If we're serious about the truth, maybe we should call him because we have a good idea about what he might say. Or what about Mr. Mulvaney, oh. who had day-to-day -day contact with the principal in our investigation, the president of the United okay. States? That's okay. not good enough? Not well, what about, the question was asked about when did we know? Oh. Or when did the president first put the hole on? Well. Okay. We do have reports that say on June 19th of 2019, Mr. Blair mm -hmm. personally instructed the director of OMB so. to hold up security so. assistance from Ukraine over so. a month before the infamous July 25th call. So, Thank you, Mr. Yeah, yeah, Chief yeah, Justice. Yeah, she just got shut down. Thank you. Go sit your tail down because what you did made no sense. What you did is avoided answering the question. The question is not what Mick Mulvaney knew and when the hold was put on it and, and the President Trump shaking down people and he's trying to cheat and take away votes. The question has something to do with a litany and series of events and facts and information and evidence that Joe Biden knew about his son's dealings in Ukraine and his son and him talked about this and Joe Biden said he didn't and his son said he did but yet he never said son since I'm over stamping out corruption in Ukraine it doesn't look good that you're sitting on the board of a corrupt country in Ukraine. He never went to the, the council at the White House and said, can you kind of help me out with this? Because I got a problem. My son is teaming up with some gangsters in Ukraine and I'm supposed to be stamping out these gangsters in Ukraine. So what should I do? How can I cover my tracks? How can I make this not look like a suspect or a conflict of interest? Huh, Eureka, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and go after the prosecutor who's looking into the corrupt country of the board that my son is sitting on, I'm going to go after him instead of asking my son to step down, okay? And then I'm going to boast about it publicly, and then everybody's going to get mad when the president says something looks a little corrupt and suspicious about that. Can you take a look at that? That's what he's going to do. And the Democrats here got the nerve to get up there and argue these stupid points like the president had no reason none to ask that question and the fact that he did wasn't because of all this evidence and suspiciousness it's solely because he wanted to cheat in his election now you can't make no sense out of this nonsense the democrats have gone so far with the nonsense it's out of control it's so far we can't even see it no more it's like that's that nonsense is running away it's booking it's, it's hauling tail right now that's how far they done ran with the nonsense anyway you've been listening to kevin and kevin's corner i listened to that and i had to chuckle say man that was a good one you really tried when she had to come up behind that wonderfully laid out argument i was like let's see how she plays this and she she knew that i gotta tap into people's feelings and then once i get them all emotional i can hit them with the one two punch by pivoting to the president's wickedness and his cheating and evil i'm gonna do hopefully that'll work only 
to those that are unlearned, okay? To the Jedi's out there, the ones who know the game, we're not, we're not moved by it. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna hit us with the Jedi mind tricks, okay? Anyway, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. I thought that was cute. Her little attempt to do this, oh, cute. Always playing games and Democrats. Anyway, find me every Wednesday night, 7:30 live in Kevin's Corner on Facebook, YouTube, and my radio blog talk show. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Double check, make sure you're still subscribed, and your notifications are set to all. And um, check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like something, put my name in a promo code. You get a 20% discount. And if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, feel free. There's a link in the bottom of this. And find me on Facebook and Twitter. God bless you. See you next time at Kevin's Corner.